Welcome to part two of our conversation with Brian, Robert, and Jeff of PD Paranormal. When you're investigating now, and when you're, I'm talking more like private investigation, somebody calls you, they have an issue, they want you to come take a look at it. How often is it that the living individuals who are suffering with whatever's going on did something to cause it? And what would you say are some of, obviously, there's Ouija boards. We know that's going to be up there. Survey says probably towards the top. Um, but what are some of the other things that that you would say, even in, in more, here in more modern times, that people are dabbling in and they think, oh, I'm just it's harmless, that end up bringing on something that they can't handle? That brings it up. We had a case in Sherall. I've been to the place before, and it was just, you know, residual from the Civil War. And uh, we get there, and we'll, the, the young gentleman that has, has his own spirit box, been watching Zach Bagans and stuff, thought it was somebody. Yeah, he was doing he was doing ITC sessions, and, and the the way he was questioning this stuff, he was inviting this stuff in, not just asking the questions. He was inviting it in, wanting things to happen, trying to get them to make things happen. And he, you just, you don't do that if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why I said what I said a while ago. But this guy, he, he created a mess for himself. We didn't, really know, we didn't really know what was going on there. And through an investigation, you know, I watched him, you know, a little bit. I was watching through the DVR. And our um, team manager, Andrew, was in there. Me and I was out there at the um, DVR. I said, look, keep an eye on this guy because his eyes keep kind of rolling back. His head turning black. I said, something ain't right with this dude. And it kept on and on, and we finally come out for a break. And I slid some uh, holy water on my, on my finger, walked by, touched him on the shoulder. He started burning. And all of a sudden, he's like, man, why am I burning for him? Like, and then it's like, all of a sudden, looks at me, starts laughing, like, ha, 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 like a evil laugh. Like, what the crap is going on? Yeah. I was sitting there watching everybody else, and Rob, all of a sudden, we got him before he left. We started praying. And Rob's there talking to him, and I heard Robert and praying and something. I looked back, and this dude's laying on the ground, passed out. I'm like, what? What in the hell just happened? Yeah. He woke up. He didn't know we were there the whole time. He didn't even know what was there while we were there. He didn't for. even know who we were. It was like the person you were interacting with previously was someone else. It yeah. was. It was yeah, someone actually, else. His, his grandparents called it. Yeah, his grandparents is the one to call. And see, I'm, I'm no exorcist. I know nothing about it. That is the first time I've ever had to do anything like that. I didn't know what to do. I ain't going to say anything a lot. I was scared. That is the first and only time I have ever been scared on an investigation. Yeah, because I've seen enough TV shows and exorcisms to know that if you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt somebody. Yeah. And I didn't know anything about that. All I knew is my faith. And my faith told me to to pray for this young man. And I put my hands on him. And next thing I know, I was in all kind of tongues trying to pray for this guy. And I remember, I, I don't remember what I said or nothing, but I do remember him falling out, just passing out. And he hit the ground so hard when he got up, the whole side of his face was bleeding. His nose was bleeding. He even had blood coming out of his ear. Oh, my gosh. And he just looked at me like, where are we at? Who, who are you? Why are y'all here? Why are y'all at my grandma's house? I mean, like, he didn't know anything. What is the, the difference between inviting things in when using, let's say, a spirit box versus just asking questions? I mean, what, what is the what's the differential there uh, when when executing that? Well, I think when you I get a place and you ask them questions, you ask them to use your energy or come in and sit down or grab your hand, talk to you, or, you know, use your energy to take a manifest or speak to you. But on doing that, you got to realize, OK, at the end of that, you got to look, you no longer have the authority to use my energy. You cannot be here anymore. You have to leave and we're closing this session. So closing it is is obviously very important. I guess my, my question about when you close a session we're talking about spirits. Are there like a, a set of rules that they have to comply with? I mean, if no. it, yeah, that was like you can close it, and that's your will to say I'm closing it. But do they have to be like, oh, okay, I'm gone, thank you, <laughs> you know? or can no, they be like, screw you, they, I'm hanging they, out? They don't have to do what you ask them to do. But yeah. most of the time, if if you're polite to them and you treat them with respect, I really believe that mm -hmm. that they'll be polite to you and treat you with respect. But, you know, it's just like every session that we do, we, we always let them know that we we're here out of respect. You know, we're, we don't mean any harm. We're not trying to make you do anything you don't want to do. But 
you know, we just want to ask you a few questions and then we'll ask our questions or whatever. And then we thank them and we tell them, okay, we're going to close the session now, you know, and that's whenever prayer comes in, you know, you ask that nothing attaches to you, nothing leaves with you, that everything remains where it's at, you know, and you don't take it home with you. Have any of you ever left an investigation and had an attachment? No, no, not yet. But, you know, here at my house, it's a newer house. Every time me and Rob's here going over evidence or EVPs, the uh, hall closet likes to open up and shut by itself. But it only does it when we're going over evidence. I don't understand that. It never does it except when we're going over evidence. Interesting. This is just an opinion question, and I'm curious what you guys think about it. And it's kind of in reference to that gentleman who had the blood disorder. And then after the the dark demonic spirit was out of his home, seemed to miraculously get better. Had that not happened, though, and this blood disorder continued, medically speaking, it sounded like he would have died. How his doctors could not explain. They told him that when he went back, they were like, something's not right. So they went back and looked at the first test to make sure the diagnosis was correct. Yeah. And he had the blood disorder, but whenever they redid it again, you know, after we left a couple weeks later, he didn't have it anymore. And they just, there's no explanation for it. When he called us and told us about it, I ain't gonna lie, man. He was crying. I, I about started crying cause I was so happy for him. I mean, I'm not tooting our own horn for anything, but the whole goal of PD region paranormal is to help our client, whether it's paranormal or not. Mm-hmm. And we did what we were supposed to do and we we helped this guy and now he's got life because of that yeah how often do you think again this is just the opinion question do you think people actually die directly or indirectly from the paranormal i i really can't answer that question but i can say that it does happen Mm mm-hmm it may not be in the super dramatic, you know, exorcist style thing where like, oh, my gosh, their head exploded or, or something, you know, like, oh, truly, this is a ghost. Without a doubt, no investigation needed. It was a ghost that did it. But things like this kind of it's almost more passive aggressive, the blood disorder, things of that nature where right. where that's, you know, it's going on. It can never really truly be pinpointed, but, uh, you know, or or, or, or mentally breaking people down and, and driving them to uh, you know to, to suicide to yeah. other acts that are are you know maybe uh, not on purpose you know a, a, a substance abuse things of that nature that end up totally ruining someone's lives or, or even killing them and i really believe that you know when people commit suicide and stuff i'm not saying that every case is the same mm-hmm. but me personally, I do believe that it has something to do with an attachment or something. Cause I've known people that they're just as sweet and smart as the next person and never had a problem in their life. And then all of a sudden they hit a bad streak of luck or they do get an attachment or something that they don't have no clue what's happening. And, uh, you know, a few weeks later you get a phone call. Hey, did you hear about such and such? They killed herself last night. Yeah. That's not that person. I really do not believe that's that person. I understand. I mean, it, it, it's shocking when things like that happen, especially. I mean, a lot of people do suffer in silence, but it, it, and it's also one of those things where, you know, you can get all the mental health help in the world. Many don't seek it out, unfortunately. Um, but I mean, that number one has a stigma to it, which it shouldn't. And I hope we get to a world where that doesn't uh, have a stigma. But an even bigger stigma would be saying, I think there's a something demonic or dark or evil attached to me that that almost like adds a new layer of crazy if you will to the yeah. outside world of someone looking at them when they're already being looked at as there's something wrong with them well to give you an example we had a call uh it's been about a year ago this lady called us and and she's local in our area and we we didn't know her or anything but she heard about us and she she was having a lot of mental problems because she kept hearing this ringing sound and buzzing in her ear. Mm-hmm. Nobody else in the home could hear it but her. And it was driving her to the point where she was going crazy. She It got to the point where everywhere she went, she was hearing this buzzing sound. Mm-hmm. And she could not figure it out. Her husband could not hear it. So we went over there and we set recorders out. We couldn't hear it. I ain't going to lie. We did not hear it. But once we got the recorders going, we could hear it in the recorders. 
So then me and Brian, you know, of course, being paranormal investigators, our first instinct is not paranormal. It's debunking. Mm -hmm. So we get to going through this house and we got EMF meters and we're not getting anything on EMF meters. And I told Brian, I said, something's not right. When we got to the hallway to where the attic door was, I got one little spike on my EMF meter. And I'm like, wait a minute. I told Brian, I said, go grab the radiation meter. And he went and got the little radiation meter. And when he got to that hallway and we opened that door, this thing peg slam out. And Brian, I, I couldn't fit in the crawl space going up to the attic. So Brian did. When he got to the top of the crawl space, everything, every piece of meter we had started blowing up. And come to find out the wiring in that house had no grounds whatsoever. And we got an electrician out there. She, she paid the electrician. He rewired the whole house and she has not heard that buzzing sound since, which actually helped her mental state now because she don't feel like she's going crazy, but it wound up being wiring in her home. When it's the wiring in a home and things are like that, what is it that, what is it about that, that, that affects mental state? I can understand like a, a silent buzzing or a, a tone that may be inaudible, but then, and that's slowly just, you know, messing with your mind, but yeah, it, it goes beyond the, the audio magnetic energy and the yeah. electromagnetic radiation field is coming off of it. Yeah. People that are really sensitive to that, man, it can cause sickness. It can cause nausea. I mean, there's headaches, vision mm -hmm. blurs, hallucinations. hallucinations. It can cause a lot of things because, just because she was very sensitive to it, her husband wasn't. He never experienced the thing. Yeah. And so it, it's not paranormal at that point. It's it's something that is it's that essentially calls. scientifically it's messing with your what brain waves? What how would you describe it? I believe that's what it is. It's, it's that she's so sensitive to it till it it triggers something in her brain and there's there's really no explanation on my end because I'm not a doctor or anything, but once we got the wiring done, she's never heard it again, and she's living a comfortable, normal life now. No problem. How interesting. Uh, one more final question, uh, there, because obviously there's that that happens, and debunking, yes, that's the number one thing to do, to try and, and just see what could possibly be the cause. Let me ask you this. It's a question I've been asking lately to a lot of people. Uh how often do you think we ourselves, the living, are the cause of the haunting? Now, not in the, the terms of conjuring something up by talking to spirits that exist, but literally just our negative energies being out there, um, especially in the last couple of years, all the stress everyone's been under. Basically, we've all suffered trauma from from this the, the from COVID and, and the way that the world has been working. How often or how much do you think it's that collective energy that's creating something or influencing something or, you know, causing our atmosphere and things around us to to appear to be ghostly or paranormal? Well, I agree with you 100 percent because you got to think about it. We're we're fueling it. We're yeah. giving it energy and in your house all that time, build up being aggravated because you can't go nowhere and pissed off about a build of energy you know some of them could be sensitive and causing poltergeist activity coming off their ekp off of them yeah in the last two years as investigators i'm curious have you guys seen an increase in in people having issues and activity it seems like when the COVID hit it was getting a lot more calls so the activity was picking up do you think that's because of the stress people were under or because they were just more present in their home than they ever had been in the past? Probably because they were more present yeah, in their home. home. Yeah. Been at home all the time to start noticing things they didn't notice before. Yeah. These are all questions I, I was starting to wonder about at the beginning going, I'm going to ask this in like several years because I'm like, this is going to be really an interesting experiment to see what exactly how this all plays yeah. out in, in this world. And, yeah. and it seems like too now all the stuff that's going on it seems like the veil between the living and the dead is kind of getting thinner and thinner yeah and you know that brings up another point that brian had asked me a couple weeks back me and him was talking and he we were doing an investigation and he just it jumped on his mind and he stopped what he was doing and he looked at me and he's i got a question i was like what's that he said how do we know that the spirits ain't investigating us <laughs> true 
I was like, you know, I never thought about that, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> that wraps up part two of our conversation with Robert, Brian, and Jeff. A big thank you to them for sharing their experiences with us today on the program. And thank you to you for supporting the show and keeping us on the air. We would not exist without it. Until next time, for all of us at the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.